Tato pieta samambalo Nisarpa kalevaram Itaram vikshadu karto Mukta kanto rurodaha Word for word. Tata. Thereafter. Abhyatya. After entering into. Asramam. The hermitage. Bala. Boy. Galisarpa. The snake on the shoulder. Kalevaram. Body. Pitaram. Unto the father. Viksha. Having seen Dukkha Arta in a sorry plight, Mukta Kanta loudly, Rodha cried, Ha in the past. Translation Thereafter, when the boy returned to the hermitage, he saw a snake on his father's shoulder, and out of his grief he cried very loudly. Translation, please repeat. Thereafter, when the boy returned to the hermitage, he saw a snake on his father's shoulder, and out of his grief he cried very loudly. Purport, the boy was not happy because he committed a great mistake, and he wanted to be relieved of the burden on his heart by crying. So after entering the hermitage and seeing his father in that condition, he cried loudly so that he might be relieved. But it was too late. The father regretted the whole incident. Tato pieta shamam balo galisar pakale varam pietaram vikshadukarato mukta kanto rudha. Thereafter, when the boy returned to the hermitage, he saw a snake on his father's shoulder, and out of his grief, he cried very loudly. Parikshit cursed by a Brahmana boy. Uh, very unusual situation. This cursing. I remember one time many years ago when, uh, when we were being harassed in Melbourne by uh, one of the uh, city, in the early, early days, we were out there selling books and doing Harinam, and one, there was one uh, uh, um, council uh, bylaws officer that used to harass the devotees all day long. Oh, you haven't got the proper permit, you can't be out here doing this at all. <laughs> we used to kind of run and hide from him. And uh, he had a very square jaw, so we ended up calling him Square Jaw. <laughs> Did you run into Square Jaw today? So it got real bad, and he got, he got a couple of helpers too at one stage. And, and so, we, you know, it was just making life out there for us, you know, uh, very, 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 very difficult. So some devotees thought, Let, let's curse him. <laughs> we'll curse him. And, uh, you know, because uh, we were just new devotees and we'd, we'd, we'd read about curses, Narumuni cursing, and this one cursing, and the other one cursing. And, cursing. and we read that the, the Brahmanas, they, they held their, you know, the Brahman thread and then, and then, then uttered a curse and broke to its thread, you know, <laughs> all this stuff like this. But somehow or other, I don't know, Prabhupada heard about it. <laughs> Some devotees in Melbourne, I don't know how he got that, but, and he wrote back, he said, first of all, uh, uh, no one is qualified Brahmin to be able to do the cursing, nor is the Vaishnava, nor do devotees curse. <laughs> Only in special circumstances by great saints. So you should not do any of this cursing. <laughs> so what did we know? Even if we tried to break the thread, probably we'd broken our thumb, you know. <laughs> so cursing. So this cursing, uh, uh, <clears throat> and of course. Uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about cursing uh, 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 later on. But uh, first of all, when uh, when Sringi returned to the hermitage, to the ashram, uh, uh, as already mentioned, <coughs> he he cursed uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit. We were just hearing about what it. I mean, he hadn't actually been back yet. So, so uh, uh, and he pronounced a really heavy curse. Uh, uh, and, and Prabhupada actually mentions here, he, pr he pronounced a curse and, uh, um, you know, he regretted, he cried when he came back, uh, but it was too late. 
Now, generally, curses, when you read about curses, once pronounced, uh, you can't uh, change it. it and, uh, to, I was thinking when Maharaj was giving class yesterday how powerful you know, the, the Brahmins were. Uh, we read the stories of King Vena and the Brahmins removing him and even killing him by mantra and uh, because he was a murderer and so on and so forth and nothing could stop him. Uh, and uh, other uh, curses, uh, um, Narad Muni and so on and so forth. And the, uh, other curses, so some, some curses are, are out of anger. <coughs> but uh, how powerful is a, small, a young boy who's able to curse in this way? Uh, b- uh, but uh, he regretted, but it was too late. N- normally, <coughs> once pronounced, the curse uh, cannot be. Sometimes we, we read that they're modified. You know, just like when, uh, <coughs> whether it's a curse or whether it's a blessing even. Uh, when someone's asking for a blessing uh, and, 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 uh, and it's granted. And then, you know, just like the, the story of when uh, Kumbhakarna was, along with his brother Ravana, would, they were doing austerities to gain certain powers and, and, uh, and uh, they were propitiating uh, Lord Brahma. The Lord Brahma came and he gave the benediction, the blessings to uh, uh, Ravana and then Kumbhakarna. He wanted to ask, let's see, yes, so what do you desire? And he wanted to ask uh, Nityatwam, which means eternal life. But somehow it came out Nidratwam, which means eternal sleep. Uh, so uh, uh, so he asked like that. So, and, and then Tatashtu, and then Brahma, Lord Brahma, Tatashtu, so be it. And then he realized, oh, wait a minute, no, no, how did I, how did I say that's a mistake, it's a mistake. <laughs> I didn't know, who wants to sleep eternally? Well, I've already pronounced that, I've already uh, said, so be it, so, no, no, you have to do something and it's not proper. And so, uh, Lord Brahma modified it, all right, for six months, you will, I can't take it back, because I've already given the, the blessing for it, uh, but I can modify it, and uh, you can, uh, you will uh, sleep, you will sleep for six months, and in the other six months you'll be awake and you'll eat and you, do, you can do so many things. So it's modified. And also, wasn't it with the um, Jai and Vijay, that when they got, uh, when they got cursed by the Kumaras, <coughs> and then uh, Lord Vishnu himself came there and begged forgiveness. He, he thought that actually these are my servants and really it's an offense on me. So he begged forgiveness from the Kumaras and the Kumaras were very apologetic to the Lord. They, they realized they made a mistake actually cursing Vaishnavas, uh, uh, although actually it was foretold. That Lord Vishnu actually mentioned that it was foretold by Lakshmi because they had one time stopped Lakshmi from going in. Also previously when the Lord was asleep they stopped Lakshmi from going in there and uh, so therefore Lakshmi said in the future you will not be able to maintain this position so so Lord Vishnu he asked for forgiveness and he and he and he asked that uh, t- please consider that they may come back quickly and so you know instead of the the um, so there was the on you know when Lord Vishnu asked and it was uh, modified uh, but to retract it completely is another thing and generally that's not the, the situation uh, so, a Sringi uh, was not happy, he committed a great mistake. Now, here it's mentioned, but Prabhupada uh, in his purport explains that when he came back, he was grief-stricken, he saw his father with a dead snake, and he cried. Uh, and and uh, Now, Prabhupada explains that, that he cried because he realized he made a mistake. Um, and, uh, of course, one might think, well, he cried because he actually now he saw his... He actually, now he saw his father with a dead snake, and, and that's why I cried. Right? But anyway, Prabhupada explains it in this way. He realized he, he had, he had a, enough intelligence to realize he acted impetuously uh, uh, without thinking first, uh, and, and he pronounced, he overreacted, he pronounced such a heavy curse. But now he was realized he made a mistake. So, of course, making mistakes, it's one of the defects, the four defects of the conditioned souls. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone cheats, everyone uh, has imperfect senses, everyone is an illusion. These are the four defects mentioned in the, in the Shastras, that every conditioned soul uh, is uh, 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 burdened by. So making mistakes uh, uh, and that one is not happy. 
he was not happy he committed a great mistake so uh, generally people aren't happy when they make a mistake you can't avoid making mistakes of course there are some who uh, if they're more in the mode of goodness they realize they've made a mistake <clears throat> others don't realize and others keep making the same mistakes over and over again uh, sometimes they don't admit they made a mistake you know they, you, some people are like that oh, I'm never wrong I never make a mistake <laughs> you're wrong <laughs> I think like that and sometimes we get like that you know we know others who are like that they're never wrong about anything they can never make mistakes it's like they can never make a mistake but how can how is it possible mistakes must be there because it's a defect of the conditioned soul uh, so when someone makes a mistake they're not happy you don't like to make mistakes uh, and so the boy was not happy he committed a great mistake so just in general making mistakes he of course he was not happy because of the, the whole situation the con you know the great king and the whole thing uh, that's a little uh, something a little bit uh, more than just in general but in general that's the situation and, and, and cheating of course cheating if someone is more in the mode of goodness and they cheat they don't feel good so uh, 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 um, uh, or, or, or imp you know people are not happy if they're in more in the mode of good if those in the mode of ignorance <coughs> more in the mode of ignorance <coughs> they're not only done that they have no regrets about it they actually enjoy cheating you know, so this is more in the mode of ignorance type person they enjoy cheating uh, and other in the mode of ignorance they may make mistakes but they blame everybody else and they enjoy blaming everybody else sometimes even you know some of them even know they made a mistake but they're not going to say <laughs> they enjoy blaming someone else for it they would like to see their reaction and that, that gives them pleasure. There's a kind of a twisted mentality that comes about from the effect of the modes of material nature. Of course, the mode of passion is somewhere in the middle. Sometimes they enjoy, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they regret, sometimes they So a mode of passion in the middle. But a mode of ignorance is like that. mode of goodness, you feel, you, feel, you, you regret. And regret, regretting something uh, uh, is important. Uh, being remorseful about something is important if you want to move on. If you don't, you've got no remorse, you've got no regret, <coughs> then uh, you don't, you're, not, uh, you're not identifying with, with, with your own situation. How can you, you know, how can you improve the, how can you improve yourself? You can't because you haven't, you haven't recognized it. So it's very, very important. So one has to have a little bit of goodness to understand these things. So cheating, making mistakes, imperfect senses. Of course, no one is happy with imperfect senses. And as the body, uh, whatever species of life it is, uh, we become unhappier. Imperfect senses, the eyes, we can't see anymore. Uh, we, you know, our, our, our eyes are gone, our ears are gone. Hey, hey that's like me, right? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> when we were young, we had really good hearing, and then as we get older, you have to wear, you get one of those things with it. <laughs> hey, what was that? <laughs> and uh, uh, you're always asking what. Uh, <laughs> I'm finding myself like that. What? <laughs> So you did things in the youth that the, kind of uh, had an effect on your hearing. Uh, but naturally, of course, as old age, people lose their hearing. People lose their vision. So you're not happy about it. No one likes it. Only a fool would say, oh, I don't mind these things. I mean, it's a fool. So no one likes imperfect senses, whether it's hearing or seeing. So no one's happy with any of these things. Uh, being an illusion being delu you know in illusion about that not understanding properly about things you want to understand something uh, so you're not happy so the the, the 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 defects no one is happy with these defects uh, and so this is just part and concomitant part and parcel of living in the material world uh, so how can you be happy really with these with these defects you can't but uh, uh, by practicing devotional service you can rise above uh, identifying with these things, even though the body is there. Uh, for a devotee, the, the devotee um, <coughs> understands that the body is going to have these things. I was uh, reading the story of uh, when, uh, when uh, um, Jagai and Madai attacked uh, Lord Nityananda, and 
and you know, Lord Nityananda ran away, you know, initially like that, and, and Advaita Acharya <coughs> was trying to keep up with him, <laughs> but he was very elderly. <laughs> and he said, oh, he will, don't run so fast, I'm an old man. <laughs> but he was laughing about it. <laughs> we old men, we can't run so fast anymore. <laughs> So uh, devotees like or find it almost humorous, <clears throat> you know that uh, you know everything goes. Uh, so being in all these things. Uh, so, but uh, uh, if one commits a mistake, as I said, if someone is in mode of goodness, then they realise, oh, I've made a, a great mistake. So then, what are you going to do about that? Uh, uh, what are you going to do about that? Uh, uh, you have to rectify the mistake. And of course, in ordinary life, uh, you know, in, in the Vedic system, of course, um, you know, there we have like a, a prayaschita, atonement, atonement for mistakes. I was reading the other week about um, uh, um, the Rajasuya Yagya, uh, when Yudhisthira Maharaj, they were in Hastan, he did one Rajasuya Yagya, and Shishupala court stood up and made so many. Uh, derogatory remarks against Krishna when all that was done they continued with the, uh, the, the yagya and at the end they did a prayaschita homa I, I noted that they did a prayaschita homa which means if there was any mistake in the performance of the yagya you do this homa and uh, that you know kind of atones for it it's supposed to atone for it so in, in the Vedic system there's prayaschita now of course as, as far as devotees are concerned there is no need of prayaschita Devotional service itself uh, purifies one. Uh, uh, so in general, one can continue on. Of course, there are other, in, in general principle is like that. But there are other considerations. If you commit apparatus, one makes mistakes. You continue on very sincerely trying to avoid the mistakes. But if you commit aparad, then there are other considerations. Nam aparad, you have to beg forgiveness. Uh, at, at, the, at the feet of the holy name of the Lord. Uh, Seva Aparad, uh, you did some uh, uh, Aparad with you in your service, so you have, to, um, you have to beg forgiveness, whoever you did the Seva Aparad. That's the, the method. You, general principle, continue on. Uh, you know, I remember <clears throat> one time a devotee came, oh, I'm committing so many Aparads with my chanting, I should just give up this chanting. You know? I don't want to commit any more mistakes. So therefore, I should give up this chanting. And he was very serious. I'm going to give up this chanting. I'm getting so many mistakes. I said, that's not the solution. <laughs> solution you keep. Nama parada jupta nam nama neva haranti kam avishanti kutanyavati karamicha. It is mentioned that if you commit offenses, uh, no, the solution is not to stop the chanting. Uh, you're going to be offensive in some way. I mean, people in the world, because of their envy, they're just offensive. Uh, uh, so uh, um, the way to, you have to keep chanting, but be mindful of the and avoid it, and yet seek association of great devotees. Whatever you need to do, try to avoid, but keep chanting. Never give up the chanting. Uh, so Nama Parad, Seva Aparad, of course, Vaishnava Aparad. You have to uh, beg forgiveness uh, uh, um, from the Vaishnava you offended. <clears throat> I was reading the story of uh, Amoga. Amoga was the um, was the son-in-law of Sabbambatachari. So when Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri, uh, he would get invitations for lunch, and uh, Sabbambatachari wanted to invite him every day. <laughs> so no, no, it wouldn't be proper for me to go every day. And he said, well, come for 20 days. No, 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 too many days. I can't come too many days. It's not, 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 not good that the sannyasi does like that, you know. And then we'll come for 10 days, and finally they settle at five days. I'll come for five days, but the other, the other sannyasis can come and fill up the whole month. You know. So that was the arrangement. So uh, Lord Chaitanya came for lunch, and they prepared, uh, uh, some of them about the charity, prepared this wonderful, huge, like, feast for Lord. They were so happy to have Lord Chaitanya come for lunch. So, and, and actually, as mentioned, Sabbam Bhattacharya also helped. So the two of them were in there preparing you know, for a long time. They, finally, they were happy. Uh, but he knew about Amoga, <laughs> that he was a fault finder. And he was worried about that. And he thought that, well, you know. So he, he specifically asked his daughter, don't allow your husband to come here. Right? <laughs> I don't want him coming here because he knew he was a fault finder. Now, fault finders, 
you know, there's one, I remember reading some time ago, there was one letter that uh, Prabhupada wrote to, uh, well, right in the early days, Nanda Kumar, and uh, he said, that, uh, he was asking about fault, you're talking, you're asking about fault finding. And Prabhupada said that, now, if someone is looking for faults, he will f find them everywhere, even in Krishna. Uh, but if one is looking for Krishna, then he will see Krishna everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, the fault finders are going to fault find. The haters are going to hate. You know? But if, you, if you're looking for that, then that's what you'll find. Even in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, fault finders, it, it, that's a great offense. So the world is full of fault finders. So, unfortunately, Amogha was like that. So he didn't want him to come. So then Lord Chaitanya came, they sat him down and they did it and they spread out. And Lord Chaitanya was very astounded. So my dad, you must have been cooking for days for this, you know. And uh, no, they sat him down, no, no, this is, just take what you can, you know, it's all right. We, 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 we wanted to pre prepare something nice. And so actually, uh, uh, Sub Mambatacharya thought that Amoga might try to sneak in, so he actually had a stick. <laughs> He was guarding the door. There was a, just a couple entered, one from the kitchen into where Lutcha, and one going outside. Uh, so, uh, and I'm pretty sure that he snuck in through the kitchen. <laughs> he was expecting. But it just, when, when Sabbomba Terry was serving out, somehow or other, Amogha snuck in. And soon as he saw the, he said, God, look at all this, all this food here. This is enough for 10 men. You're supposed to be a sannyasi controlling the senses. And he went on and on. And then, you know, Sabhambatacharya just, he got the stick and he chased him out. <laughs> he chased him out, right? And the Mogha Mo was running quick, he couldn't catch him. <laughs> he chased him with a stick. But when he came back, he was so, so uh, uh, devastated. And so that his wife was devastated that, that a Mogha had come. And he said, I've just... I brought you here just to be offended by my son-in-law. What a great offence, you know. And he and he broke down. They were crying, everything like that. And because Lord Chaitanya was just smiling, he said, "Actually, you know, uh, uh, you know what your son-in-law has said. What Amogha has said is correct. You know, this is enough. I'm a sannyasi. I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, eat so much. Yeah, but don't worry. Just we'll continue. Don't think anything of it. Uh, so." Uh, uh, they continued serving, but uh, uh, both Sabbomba and Bhattacharya and his wife were very, very unhappy. And they, they, I think that they fasted, which is like a prayaschita. It said when one offends a sannyasi or something like that, Vaishnava, one, one of the prayaschitas uh, is, is fasting, doing some tapasya. Uh, every and, you know prayaschita. Now everyone, you know, like in the, in the Catholic Church, they have the, the penance. The penance, you know, you go, you 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 have you can you do your confession, you, and then you're given the penance, you know, uh, you know, three hail marys or whatever they give us. So we have practice, but of course in devotional service a little bit. But anyway, he fasted. He was so upset. Now Lord Chaitanya just uh, ate the lunch, and he didn't think anything of it, and he just left. And but in the meantime, uh, Moga had gone away, and then very next day he came down with cholera very very heavy <clears throat> and uh, uh, and it got worse and worse just even in the one day practically and then the next day also that he was close to death and when when Sabhambatacharya heard about it he said well he got his he, he was actually <laughs> happy you know actually you know he was thinking that you know for the, the great offense he committed he, he should leave his body so uh, uh, and actually they told they, they, they told their, their daughter that you should give him up <laughs> He's a fallen husband. Leave him. <laughs> like, that's what they told her. <laughs> so they said all these things. But uh, Lord, now Lord Chaitanya had heard. Gopinatha Chari had come and told Lord Chaitanya what had happened to to uh, Moga. So Lord Chaitanya went there, and he and he was lying down, almost dead. And Lord Chaitanya put his hand on his heart. And he said, "You are supposed to be a pure brahmana. Why have you let envy and hate come in here?" This is not very good that you have done like that, worse to that effect. You know? And he said that. Uh, but uh, 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 now, if you uh, uh, don't commit any more offenses, uh, and, uh, and 
And so when Lord Chaitanya touched him like that, his cholera just disappeared. And uh, 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 Amoga just just was got up and he and, and actually he fell down at the feet of Lord Chaitanya. He offended Lord Chaitanya. He fell down at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and begged forgiveness. But from the touch of Lord Chaitanya, not only was his cholera gone, he began to exhibit ecstatic symptoms. And, and Lord Chaitanya reiterated, now from this time on, just chant always the Hare Krishna mantra and don't commit any more offenses. So this was uh, the, the, the direction. So when Lord Chaitanya went again to Sabbamba the Charya, he was, they were still fasting and, and uh, they were apologizing, still apologizing. And, and Lord Chaitanya said that, no, no, you can stop this now because now he is uh, repented and he is, he is a, a Vaishnava now. Uh, you, you can accept him and give your blessings to him, you know, like that. So generally like that with devotees, you have to see, you know, whether there's Vaishnava Aparat, Guru Aparat, of course, and Seva Aparat, Nam Aparat. So generally just continue on, but if you've done Aparat, then you have to try to uh, do something about it. Uh, if one m makes a mistake, <clears throat> try to fix it. I think I told the story, you know, one time uh, uh, um, Satsuru Maharaj was in, in Melbourne and, and a proper was giving the lecture, he asked for his glasses and uh, he said, where are my glasses? Oh, 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 I forgot them. That time they were living outside in the devotee's house and, and so Prabhupada was looking. So? <laughs> oh, Prabhupada, I'll, I'll run back and get them. All right. <laughs> Another time, also in such a remark, there was a letter proper dictated, and, and then he thought about it at the end. He said, actually, add, add this. And, and he, the letter was sent, but then he said, well, actually, he may not understand completely, so uh, put, make another letter, and I'm going to explain it more clearly, and send that also as a follow-up. And so Prabhupada asked uh, the next day, did you send that letter? Uh, and he said, oh, no, no, Prabhupada, I forgot to send it. Then how will he understand? And so Prabhupada was just looking at him and I, uh, I'm sorry, bro. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> there was another time also when the one devotee said, Prabhupada, I'm so fallen. I'm such a fool. And Prabhupada said, well, how long are you going to remain a fool? <laughs> And don't think you're the most fallen, <laughs> either. No one is the most. That's Krishna. He is the most. So to think I'm the most fallen or I'm the most humble, uh, that's a, a little bit of a, it's a subtle pride. I'm the most. You're not the most anything. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, these things have to be uh, understood very carefully. So he was not happy, he committed that mistake. Uh, now, what, what to do, as far as stringy, what could he have done? But Prabhupada actually said it was too late. But it was, some things are just too late. What can be done? Uh, um, uh, because he pronounced the curse, and, and, uh, and, and so uh, the father regretted the whole incident. Uh, it's mentioned later on, the father didn't think anything, he just saw the snake and just threw it off. And so it was too late. He'd, he'd given such a heavy curse. And also, <clears throat> he knew that Parikshit Maharaj, being a Vaishnava, would not try to retaliate. He would just accept it. So, although, you know, he certainly had the power uh, uh, to do it. But he knew he wouldn't do it. And even as far as uh, uh, modify it was just the, 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 the curse was so strong so this thing and all this type of thing we saw it in the we read about it in the Daksha Yagya you know the Daksha Yagya cursing I curse you and then I curse you you know and I cursed it and the ca cursing and counter cursing uh, so this is you know when, when Daksha was angry at Lord Shiva for not another incident there with Lord Shiva was you know there, there was a big Yagya organized by Daksha Already Daksha didn't have a good feeling. He didn't think that Lord Shiva was really qualified to marry his daughter, but somehow or other it happened. But anyway, when he went to that Yagya, everyone, because he was the Prajapati, everyone stood up and offered respect, except Lord Shiva, who 
uh, there it was in meditation, another instance of meditation. So the, now one thing, Daksha may be Prajapati, but great demigods like Brahma, Shiva, they're superior. They, it's not that they need to do like that, offer respect to someone who is actually in the junior position. But Daksha was puffed up thinking, you know, well, you know, I'm the chief Prajapati, so everyone should have stood. But look, look, so he took the opportunity to say so many things. Now in that in, in incident, Lord Shiva just didn't say anything. He didn't try to retaliate, he was very composed, and he just left. Of course, others, then they started up and cursing, and it escalated, escalated, and all those type of things. Uh, so uh, uh, we have to be mindful of all, all, all this type of thing. Uh, uh, try to rectify, some mistakes are made, try to rectify, uh, cursing, counter cursing, all these types of things. Uh, uh, this should be, you know. Uh, of course, when one is uh, um, when one is trained properly, then the mistakes will be uh, uh, minimised. If you're not trained, then so many mistakes will be there. So as we go along <coughs> in devotional service, we learn more, and then we don't make as many mistakes. But if the mistake is made, then try to rectify that mistake. It is very, very important. And there, there are all levels of mistakes. Uh, and so uh, one has to be trained. In devotional service, it takes us to a high, high, high platform. So we, when we're trained, uh, we understand these things are all different levels. Uh, and just like in the material world, uh, people are trained, you know, especially if they're in very responsible positions or very, uh, very... Um, what's the word, uh, very crucial uh, positions, just like a, a surgeon or something like, like that. You know, now, if the surgeons are trained, they're highly trained, and, you know, no one can just become a doctor or a surgeon again as another level. Uh, uh, so no one can just be like that, you know. You, you may walk into the surgery and see all these, uh, you, know, or, you know, just like if you've ever been in a surgery, you know, the, the, all the surgical instruments, uh, they kind of have drills and this and that and the other. They, you know, almost, almost like carpenters' tools. <laughs> a carpenter can walk and say, "Yeah, well, I use these tools. I can do this operation." Would you trust a carpenter to do the operation on you? No, because a surgeon, if he makes just a little, as a few millimeters out, boom, the patient can die. So they have to be trained to such a high level to not commit mistakes. Sometimes they do, because as I said, for defects, it was like one of the uh, devotees, you know, they did an operation and, and later on it was found they left something inside. You know, they made a, made a mistake like that. They left one of those little cotton buds or something like that inside. They stitched him up and it was still in there. And he felt uncomfortable, they went for an x-ray and there it was. <laughs> so even on that level, mistakes are made. <clears throat> Uh, so, but nevertheless, they have to be trained. So, devotional service, uh, you know, anyone can engage in devotion, everyone can do the chanting, but if you want to go to the high, high levels, then, then you have to be mindful, you have to be educated, be trained in so many ways to uh, not try to avoid these things. Train, you know, you know offences, uh, mistakes, uh, that can, you know, you have to think of the consequences, Think about things very carefully. Uh, as we grow older, we think about things more, more, more and more carefully. Uh, Prabhupada one time said, you know, uh, bef before you say something uh, that uh, has content, you know, can have, think about it very, very carefully. And whatever you write, think about it a thousand times. <laughs> because in, in, if it's in writing, I mean, before you write it. Of course, one has to be decisive at the same time. One can't be procrastinating, you know, never want to make a decision. So have, all those things have to be balanced out. So, uh, uh, and so it's, you know, we can learn a lot here from this particular uh, story in the in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Boy was not happy, but it was too late. Uh, the father regretted the whole incident. So, Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I'll read this again. Thereafter, when the boy returned to the hermitage, he saw a snake on his father's shoulder, and out of his grief, he cried very loudly. Any questions? <coughs> yes. Generally, generally. Yeah, yeah. So you've got the situation, um, like Prabhupada, it was, um, there was such a big fight going on with him and uh, Mr. Nyan on by at the land. And um, 
But the story I heard anyway was that uh, when Prabhupada heard that he'd been to lift his body, Prabhupada says, oh, at last I've been praying to Lord Nishimude for three days to kill him. <laughs> because he was such a, sna a sapper, a snake. So he cheated so many people there. Like Well, that was more about <laughs> not a curse. No, it wasn't. I, I wouldn't categorise it as a cur curse. Curse is you pronounce something on someone. Uh, of course, you know uh, it could be in, in one sense, yeah. <laughs> but I think it was more he, he offered the prayer because you know he wanted to do something. And this man was such a, 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 a low life that he had done it to so many others, and uh, somehow or other. Lord Nishringa, they've heard his prayer. You know. I, I think it was more of a prayer. But of course, Prabhupada left it to Krishna. Whatever he decided, Prabhupada would have been satisfied. But uh, sometimes we can pray like that. But uh, generally, that, that, was, that was the only time I, 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 I know of that Prabhupada did that. <coughs> so, very exceptional. We'll let someone else know another time. Uh, yes, Basit. Because we have that. Because we have that propensity for defects, so that propensity is always there with everybody that they... Yeah. That propensity is there because everybody's got that sort of um, seeding within themselves that they, you know, the loathing and sin and envy, so they can't curse these days, they, is it that they sort of transpose it into legal systems so if anything happens then okay I'm gonna sue you. you well, know, yeah. so it goes this way, so yeah. it's like you have so many lawyers there to sort of facilitate so people will sue with the drop of the hat, you know. Yeah, it's always someone else's fault, you know, is that you you know, uh, uh, what was I remember that story of them. I couldn't imagine just telling me some story of that. That something, someone was suing just for some insignificant thing. <laughs> sue me, sue you, society. Yeah, because uh, that's you know no one is ever uh, you know at fault. No one's really to blame. If something happens, uh, it's always someone else's fault. And therefore, to retaliate, you you will want to you know get some money off them or sue them or whatever you want to do. So yeah, this this uh, really highlights the actual mentality these days, and it's becoming more and more like that, isn't it? The slightest thing. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, no, who, 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 who wasn't here? <laughs> That's right. I remember this. The man was taken to court. He was a criminal, and uh, he was taken to court to to be tried. And he'd been many times before, very kind of hardened criminal. So, but somehow or other, he got away from the, the, the when we'd been being escorted, he got away and ran out and jumped out the, the window. And it was on like the first level or something like that. He jumped out the window. When he landed, he broke his legs. So then he sued. <laughs> he, he sued this. He sued. I don't know who he sued. <laughs> This is in America somewhere. He sued the justice system or, the, or whoever it was, the corrective services. But he sued for not, ha not, not containing him properly. <laughs> you didn't do your job properly. You didn't contain me properly. And I was able to break away and jump out the window, which shouldn't have happened if you had have done your job. <laughs> so he sued. Let's just see. I mean, it's just all, all twisted, warped kind of mentality of people these days. You know, uh, so that's uh, unfortunately the attitude. Such one of the defects of the condition. So, die, Sula Prabhupada, ki die, gold, feminine, hari hari bo.